Hello, I would like to welcome you to uh, our session on De Gruyter and how to become an author with us. My name is Karen Sora. I'm Vice President Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics for the German-speaking markets. I'm a chemical engineer by training and a programmer, but spend most of my life in publishing with Wiley VCH, Wiley, Springer, and with De Gruyter building the international publishing program. The last two years, I'm in charge of the German-speaking markets. So why would one publish with us? We are fast, we provide quality, and we have an individual approach for each author. We publish a wide range of books and journals in different publishing models. As you can see in the picture, we are prominently represented at the book fairs. So are you interested in scientific writing? We are here to help you becoming an author. Do you know the children's story, The Three Bears, in which a girl named Goldilocks finds a house owned by three bears. She tests their food, their beds, and finds that some of them are too hot, too big, whereas others are in the other extreme, like too cold, too small, and only one is just right. This concept of just right is applied also to sciences, but also to publishing with the Greuther. Due to our size, the Greuther is just right. We are small enough to be flexible and personal, but also big enough to invest in technological developments. We are there for our authors, and the authors receive personal support the entire way. Let me tell you about um, a few things about De Gruyter. So De Gruyter is an independent scholarly publisher since 1749. We publish 1,600 books per year and 800 journals. We have offices in Berlin, Basel, Boston, Munich, Beijing, Warsaw, and Vienna. We also distribute the eBooks of 20 international renowned publishing partners. The whole American Ivy League distributes their ebooks via our platform. We have 350 employees and we are one of the biggest open access publishers in the world. So, what does science, technology, engineering, and mathematics at the Greuther mean? We publish in mathematics. We also publish in technology, and here it means computer sciences and engineering, and we also publish in the physical sciences in chemistry, industrial chemistry, chemical engineering, material sciences, and physics. And how does this work? So the authors or editors discuss the book idea with an acquisition editor, and here are the names listed for the acquisition editors in the physical sciences. Then you submit a book proposal, we provide you with a template, and you write 150 to 350 pages. The outcome, is a beautiful book, like you can see on the left-hand side. We have different book series in different levels. And here you can see the DGS, the graduate, the STEM, and the monograph and references. Monographs and references also comprise handbooks, encyclopedias, and dictionaries. The different series have, like the DGS series has 800 volumes, the graduate series comprises 500 volumes, the STEM series 300. The level of the audience goes from left-hand side to right-hand side. If you are interested in publishing with us, contact an acquisition editor. We will discuss the levels and which series would be the most appropriate for your content. From the, the idea to publication, we will support you throughout the whole process. In the first part, the red buttons, you can see we will be supported by the editorial office. In the blue part, production office jumps in. And then after publication, it is a joint effort to provide the success for your book. So why to write an academic book? Is it for you? 
It gives your teaching material a permanent home. It puts your teaching ideas into something everyone can benefit from. Why not communicate your research to a non-expert audience? It raises your profile as a lecturer and researcher and leads to interactions with high profile academics. And it makes you famous. So is an author, editor, or a chapter author for you? It's a distinction in where your name is placed. Authors and editors are named on the book's cover. Chapter authors are found on the contributor list within the book, not on the cover. My advice, if you spend time in writing content, why not be the name on the cover? We provide author support, individual and personal, by, um, during the manuscript generation is provided by our content editors. When copy editing and um, typesetting jumps in, you are um, advised by production editors. And um, the appealing look and feel of the published book you can see on the right hand side. The greatest book authors receive a 30% discount on all of our publications plus free shipping. And it, incre it increases, of course, the visibility of your name. What happens after publication? We provide an international distribution, online sales. We have, are in close contact with libraries and institutions, and we represent you at different fairs, congresses, and conferences. We also provide marketing on physical um, sciences reviews on the Twitter account and on other social sciences um, outlets. How you can support your work, it's not enough to write, you need to be found. And here you have, we have a concentrated effort. We need to optimize um, your text for Google. So pick the right title, the most important words first. Use keywords, eliminate fillers nobody would look for. Like for instance, introduction, modern or properties. Nobody looking in Google is looking for these words. The chapter titles are also important because they need to be found. And here again, the keywords play a great role. You need to provide a strong author profile. It makes it easier for people to find your work. So if you connect your profile to our publications or to your publications, then of course it's easier for the publication to be connected to your work. Use social media like Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, blogs, personal websites, and then connect it to our efforts. Another thing very important is the Amazon rank. You need to find colleagues who will provide testimonials or reviews. And it's also important to post these reviews on Amazon. Amazon is used to place your book on Amazon.com. Page 3 customers need to have a very specific search to find your book. Other distributors also use the Amazon rank. Right hand side, I've provided some numbers, what it actually means. If you have like ranked top 10, then it means you've sold 100 copies plus per year. And um, at rank 1 million, only three to five copies sold per year via Amazon. And now for a project with a twist. Physical Sciences Reviews. As you know, because you all joined this, this project um, for this conference, the normal way of publishing an edited work, meaning the editor provides a chapter list and then invites authors to write chapters, normally one waits for the chapter. If a chapter is submitted, it goes on the stack because we wait for the rest of the manuscript. The next, next manuscript is submitted. One checks whether the book is complete. If not, 
the manuscript goes on the stack. We wait. The next chapter and the next chapter. And all of this takes about 18 months, and the articles are available but unpublished. In our physical sciences reviews model, you submit a chapter and it is published the minute it is accepted in a journal. As a journal article, Physical Sciences Reviews publishes 12 issues per year, and the article is published in one of them just as it is accepted. At the end of the day, if the collection is complete, if all articles are submitted and published in Physical Sciences journals, we also close the cover and can publish the book, like the Chemical Sciences in the Focus, which is edited by Bondurai Ramazami and publishes the chapters of this conference. The readers have a timely access to the De Groyter content. The authors have rapid publications. They don't need to wait for 18 months until the book is complete. They have enhanced visibility because for one work, they are published in a journal which is citable and indexed. And at the end of the day, they also have a beautiful book. The manuscripts are submitted in a modern infrastructure. The Scholar One system, which is known by publishing in journals, is um, the system we use for physical sciences reviews. And we as a publisher, we have a modern workflow and rely a reliable timeline. We know which articles are there in the pipeline. And all of this with the aid of physical sciences reviews. We publish in open access, we publish in hybrid models and in subscription-based. Open access means a free and permanent access to published research, but it, um, it, um, it needs funding. Hybrid means that only the articles which have funding are open for readers. And subscription-based requires institutional subscriptions or individual purchase. And here are some simple practical tips on how to make your work count for more. Important is the acquisition conversation. You need to have the ideal team of authors and editors, the ideal title. You need to be very clear on the target group and on the time frame. The better prepared the proposal is, the more likely the success of the book. So the acquisition conversation. The publisher with a plan is a partner that has something to offer. The author and editor are the experts on the topic. The publisher is the expert on how to materialize the content. We need to be very clear on who will be the author and an ideal combination, for instance, of an experienced one with a beginner or a, a really international, really truly international setup is important for the success of the book. The language, of course, needs to be defined. The title and subtitle is very important, and I will talk about this in a following slide. Then the content structure, you need to be clear from the very beginning. Is it going to be a topical one? Is it going to be an alphabetical in organization, or is it going to be a collection of articles? From the very beginning, it's very important to pick the right series and the right format for the book. So is it a textbook, or is it a handbook, an encyclopedia, or a monograph? Who will be the target group? So and for what level of, of audience are you writing? What are the market per perspectives? Are there other books on the topic out there? It's fine. One needs to be only very clear from the beginning if we want to complement the other book on the market or if we want to replace that book. Also important to be um, aware of the workflow and of the contact people in the process. The publication schedule is also important. So. Um, a reasonable one would be around 18 to 24 months. Everything else is probably not really realistic. 
And then we need to be clear on the basic requirements on both sides of the partnership since we are having a baby together. The better prepared the proposal, the more likely the successful outcome. And now a few words about the title. So the longer the title meanders, the more specialized the content and the more narrow the target group, of course. So ideally, for a book, we would have maximum three to four words in the title, except in monographs. Monographs normally publish research results, and there it is okay if the title is more than three to four words. Important keywords for Google and uh, for the search should be at the beginning of the title. And one should avoid adjectives like new and modern in a book title. Below you find a few examples of don't, like thermochemical aspects of, com of combustion in high energy materials. The important words are at the end, plus the title is too long. So here my suggestion would be high energy materials, subtitle, thermochemical aspects of combustion. In principles and applications of green chemistry, the important words are at the end. My suggestion here, green chemistry, subtitle, principles and applications. New concepts in material science. This title has an expiration date because in two years time, nobody thinks the concepts are new anymore. So better avoid the adjectives like new in a title or modern. The next one, 100 must known mechanisms. This is too unspecific. 100 mechanisms of what or in what. So choose the title carefully. It will affect the success of your book. Uh, do you have any questions? I am very much looking forward to a one-to-one -one talk to discuss your next project. And now I will hand over to my colleague, Beata Soha, who will give you an overview on the journals. Thank you, Karen. My name is Beata Soha, and I have been with the Greuter for the past five years. I'm in charge of some open access journals, including in computer science. So what we've prepared here today is a brief guide on how to write and submit the best possible journal article in order to increase your chances of acceptance. The first question any researcher has to answer is why they chose this topic of study uh, for their article. Uh, there are many right answers here. You may have found an under-researched area, a novel and quickly growing field of science, or a novel approach to analyze data. Whatever the reason, the first step should always be to check the existing body of knowledge. A lot of articles get rejected because of a missing key reference to existing literature. The next step, of course, is to clearly define the goal of your research, what you want to verify, accomplish, and how you want to achieve it all, uh, and how your study will expand the existing body of knowledge. Once you've carried out your study, it's time to write up your findings in form of a journal article. When writing a paper, it is often recommended to already have a particular journal or a group of journals in mind. This way you know who you're writing for. You can devote some time to reading the journal's description and scope to make sure it is the right fit for your research. If you opt for an open access model of publication, check the conditions such as licenses and APCs, article processing charges, to make sure they are in line with the requirements of your funding body. Naturally, every researcher wants to reach the widest audience possible in their field. Checking where a particular journal is indexed helps you, indexed helps you figure out what the reach of your article will be. Similarly, impact factor can be of key importance to researchers as it can translate into points and grant money eventually. Once you've chosen a journal or journals you wish to submit to, you will have to decide on the type of article you want to submit. Note that different journals may have different article types they accept. The most common type is, of course, a research article, a regular article or a full-length article. In STEM, however, publication speed can be of vital importance, and therefore, 
authors may opt for a shorter type of article, a communication or a brief report. The, the difference between these two is minute and depends on the journal. In many of our journals, communication is where the preliminary results of a larger study are represented. Uh, where the research project is a multi-stage one uh, and the authors want to publish the first confirmed results as soon as possible, whereas a brief report is usually focused on a small-scale study. If you are researching a novel under-researched area, you may want to also consider a case study, which requires less background and literature review than uh, the other types of articles. Again, make sure that you read the instructions for authors and, and that your paper fits the criteria of the article type. Finally, at the point, at one point or another your, uh, of your research career, you may want to publish a review article, which offers a systematic overview and a critical, a critical analysis of the literature published in a given field. As mentioned before, there are different publication models, subscription, open access and hybrid, which is basically publishing an open access article in a subscription model. So you just have to be sure to choose the right one for you. Also, make sure that you uh, read the instructions for authors to, uh, to understand um, what is expected of you as an author and if you want to submit your research there. There are different types of open access articles, different types of open access uh, journals, as you can see. Green open access is uh, a very common form of self-archiving. This is where researchers publish their uh, research as soon as they finish it and uh, without waiting for the peer review process to be completed. Gold open access, this is the author pays model, which usually, but not always, includes APCs, which is the article processing charges. Uh, platinum open access, this is sponsored. Uh, APC's model. This is where another institution, a funding body, covers the costs of publishing and the authors do not. There are also other types of open access being developed and uh, you may have to choose the right model. You will have to choose the right model and figure out which is the, the best one for you. And now for some specifics, uh, each research article consists of the same elements, title, author and authors, abstract, keywords, etc. I will focus on some of them to give you some tips on how to write better journal articles and what to avoid in particular. The most important thing about the title is to make it representative of the content of the article. Many researchers, particularly at the beginning of their research career, try to invent very catchy titles for their articles. That can be very tricky, though. And please, so remember not to use slogans, jargon or wordplay. The goal here is to make sure the reader understands what each article is going to be about just by per perusing the titles of the articles. So keep the title relatively short but informative. Uh, and the rule of thumb is to keep the title at about 10 words. Here are some examples of titles, article titles, so from the most specific to those that are too broad. Um, the first one is particularly long, as you can see. Uh, the author tried to include as much information as possible in it, and it is a little overlong, I would say. The second one seems to be the ideal length. It uh, informs the reader the, about the topic of the article and the methods used. However, the, the, four, the third and the fourth one are definitely not informative enough. For example, classification of plant diseases using machine and deep learning is just too broad. Machine and deep learning are uh, encompass a whole array of techniques and it should be definitely more specific, including in the title. <clears throat> and enhancement of student uh, learning in COVID-19 uh, education is just way too broad and not specific enough. And then comes the list of authors. Every submission system will ask you to input the names of all the article uh, authors in, in the order in which they should appear. So the order is always important. Uh, the first author is often the corresponding author of the article, but it doesn't have to be this way. 
um, there should generally be only one corresponding author who sort of speaks on behalf of their co-authors so that they have to be authorized by the other co-authors to speak on their behalf. It should be mentioned here that journals do not look kindly on listing too many authors. That is, uh, for example, above eight or ten for a short article. Uh, because it can be unclear what their contribution is and you may be asked to explain it. It should go without saying that authors should avoid listing so-called ghost authors or gift authors who are just people who had no contribution to the article whatsoever or they had a very small contribution in, for example, they were part of a team that conducted research, but they weren't uh, directly involved in the research itself. So that should be avoided. Keywords are essential to making your article searchable via databases. They also help find the right reviewers for your article. So make sure that you give it some thought and choose the most representative keywords for your article. Try to use existing abbreviation. Do not invent new ones. This is all very important. Uh, and use the right number, not too many and not too few. Look at the, again, at the uh, instructions for authors to figure out the right number of keywords and uh, what they should be. The abstract is, in fact, a bigger deal than many authors realize, especially at the beginning of their career. It has to be properly structured uh, in order for the article to be even considered for peer review. So make sure it summarizes the entire article. It is not just an introduction to your article. This is not the preamble to the introduction. Uh, it, should be, it shouldn't contain references, graphs or tables, but it definitely has to include the main findings of your research. And most importantly, it cannot contain things that are not covered in your article, which is often, unfortunately, often the case and which is often a uh, reason for reje rejection. Many seasoned researchers will tell you that you should have a draft of your abstract in your head when you start writing, but the abstract itself should be the very final part that you write. Other do's and don'ts of writing an article are quite common sense, actually. Uh, but I would like to focus on some of the key aspects here. Make sure that the methodology is well explained uh, so that it cannot be it can be replicated by other researchers. Uh, make sure that your conclusions are clearly stating, including limitations. This is something that some of uh, young authors especially often avoid because they don't want to draw attention to the shortcomings of the research. But limitations are essential and they point other researchers to what can be expanded and what can be improved upon. Um, of course, introduction has to be well organized because as a reader, if you uh, come across an introduction that is just over long and poorly organized, you might quit reading at that point. So make sure that introduction is well organized. Um, and reference list, has, reference list has to be recent. This is very important. This is also when one of the things that has to be improved in many articles include the most recent refer references available. So make sure that you keep up to date with the body of knowledge being published as you write your article. Okay, um, in the introduction section, please provide a background and state the problem of the article. So describe existing solutions and findings of others. You have to describe the main limitations of your research. You should also present your hypothesis here. What do you hope to achieve? It, 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 the, and the introduction does not need to be a boring history lesson. So you can make sure that you, so please make sure that you uh, put all the existing uh, body of knowledge in uh, as concise a form as possible. Results uh, are the most important part of your article. This is where you present your findings in a clear and well-structured way. Organize them into sections if you need to. Use visual materials uh, to facilitate communicating your results. You should indicate all relevant aspects of your results here. Discussion. In the discussion section, you should show how your research fits into the existing body of knowledge, how it exp expands it on it. Finally, state the limitations to your study, as we've discussed before. 
and to show that you've done your due diligence and so that your research can be taken further. Conclusions can be a, a separate section. They can be joined with discussion in case they should be fitted in the last, the final one or two paragraphs. But in either case, make sure that your conclusions are supported by your results. Don't use your own personal opinions to justify your findings. This is also a very important point that everything has to come from the data. Everything has to be supported by the data. Author statements. This is an interesting part of the article that many researchers, especially young ones, are not used to. Um, an increasing number of journals require authors to include statements about their conflict of interest, if there is any. If there isn't any, you should also clearly state that. Uh, about research data availability, so where their data can be found and how it can be accessed. About ethics statements, especially in biomedical journals. And funding information is essential as well. It has to, it has to be disclosed in, in most uh, journals, if not all. It should go without saying that plagiarism is severely penalized and may result in blacklisting an author and a retraction of an article. All journals check for plagiarism to make sure that the research is that they publish is original. So here you can see an example of an article that draws on too many previously published articles in too much uh, in to a too large extent. So this is something that would raise red flags. There are different thresholds for different articles and different journals. For example, review articles allow usually allow for a higher percentage of overlap with other articles, but research articles definitely need a lower threshold. It, I will not give you any numbers, specific numbers here because it depends on the journal and the, the editors of the journal. Many authors ask us what happens with your article after it gets submitted and they keep asking questions via email and they keep, uh, well, they are obviously interested in what happens after they submit it. So here is what, uh, here's the breakdown of the key stages in the publishing process. First, editor's assessment. Our editors check the scope, the content and the language of the article to decide whether or not the article merits peer review. At this stage, a lot of articles get rejected, especially in more restrictive journals. This is called desk reject. Um, finally, the second part uh, is the peer review. If the article goes through desk uh, review and the auth editors decide to send the article out for uh, external peer review or use their review board to do it, then the article pro progresses to the next stage, which is peer review. It can be either single blind, double blind, or uh, in different, there are different types of peer review that can be applied here. And usually the minimum number is two reviewers or three reviewers, for example, for review articles, which are more difficult to check and they, they need an, a greater number of specialists and experts to, to look at. Um, once the reviews are collected, the editor makes a recommendation. It can be either accept, revise, reject or accept with revision in some journals. Um, once our editors reach a, reach a decision, they send the article either for publication or for the author to revise it uh, or they simply reject it. Uh, after one, two or even more rounds of revisions, when the article is finally ready for publication, the editor makes a final decision to accept and the author is notified. This is not yet the end of the article's journey. Uh, it is then moved to production where it may go through language editing and then technical editing. This is where we usually ask authors, authors to provide a signed license to publish as well as all the other source material. And one, after one or two rounds of pr proofing, the article is finally published online. So thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, I will be very happy to answer them all, especially regarding journals and open access publishing model. Uh, thank you very much and over to you.